Hi, everyone. Welcome to week six of AI plus journalism. Um, we are on Thursday, October 3rd. So if you want to open up your week six schedule and scroll down to your uh, October 3rd part of the schedule. Um, on uh, Tuesday, uh, we were meeting in class and we talked about uh, uh, the back checking overview. We watched the slideshow and uh, uh, talked about some of the techniques and uh, previewed some of the tools. Now we're going to get into the hands-on uh, tools. Um, if you need to, uh, to find this video, it's both on both of our syllabus and uh, it's also up here. So if you need to replay it again, you can find it in one of those two places, but I assume you already have found it since you're playing it. Uh, anyway, uh, onward to uh, the fact-checking tools handout. Go ahead and open this up uh, and maybe hit pause for a minute and scroll around and kind of look at it and get a feel for it. Okay, this is our handout. Um, uh, if you need additional Google trainings, they're up here at the top, um, both videos and uh, little exercises in the training center. They're free. Um, so if you ever want to pick up some skills kind of between uh, classes and stuff like that, you can do that. Um, we're going to look at some of these fun AI detection uh, exercises, uh, kind of sharpen your eye as far as picking up on uh, AI generated images. Um, uh, also, you can look at uh, the Google Fact Check Explorer. We're going to work with the uh, Google Image Search. Uh, Rolly app, which is a really, really cool tool. Um, uh, I'll show you some uh, video fact checking tools. Uh, Deep Vaco Meter is a really cool one. This one's a cool one just for everyday life to <clears throat> the phone validator database. Um, you can type a phone number in there, including yours. Uh, and it's a good way to go through. It searches all kinds of databases all over the world uh, to detect robocalls and spam numbers. Um, uh, so if somebody's calling, leaving you messages or something, you're not quite sure who they are, or if there's incoming calls. Uh, you know, in order to need to track one, type one in. Um, this is big for fact-checking robocalls and elections, um, that type of thing. We'll also look at uh, GPT-0 and copy leaks. We kind of did some work with this at the beginning of the semester, but, uh, you know, a lot of times you get press releases sent to you that might be written by AI, and these tools detect the AI in them. So, you know, uh, other than just me using it to check stories and things like that. I've got a bunch of articles and interesting readings on AI, um, you know, uh, these can be used uh, for uh, a variety of different things, uh, including if you're doing something on deep fakes, maybe for your midterm paper. Some of the research in here might be very helpful to you. Um, I've got some stuff on geolocating images, too, some resources for that. Audio detection, we're going to uh, uh, test some uh, audio deep fakes with deep fake meter um, which is a really cool little tool. Uh, video, uh, I use either Deepware or deep fake meter uh, and I got some other tools down here, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, some random fact checking tools, Google search operators, things like that. Just some uh, cool, fun uh, resources. Um, keep in mind, too, uh, we've got <clears throat> plagiarism and detection tools on Journalist Toolbox. Um, we also have an entire fact checking page of all kinds of resources. JournalistToolbox.ai, um, I maintain this uh, for you guys and, you know, for many other journalism classes around the world. Um, you can go in and, and play training videos and things like that as well. So um, a lot of free resources there for you. So let's dig into the handout now. <clears throat> um, about once a week I go in and I play with uh, which face is real and or Google's odd one out. Um, the other thing I'm going to have you do is take the spot, the troll quiz. Um, so if you want to hit pause and then click on all three of these just to open them up, they're free and easy to use. So go ahead and hit pause and open them up. All right, let's go to the first one on the list, which face is real? Um, you can go through here and, you know, kind of apply some of the skills we talked about on uh, Tuesday uh, on how to detect AI images. Are the eyes too far apart? Are the ears shaped funny? Um, you know, is there, uh, you know, something a little off about the skin tone or the lighting? Uh, and you're supposed to click on the photo of the person you think is real. Um, and my boss at Google does this. She goes through, uh, you know, about once a week too, similar to what I do. And she goes, she goes, just do this a few times. And she goes, you'll sharpen up real quick, you know. So and it'll tell you whether it's right or wrong. So I clicked on the one on the right, but the real one is here uh, on the left, um, which is weird because it looks like he has no left ear. Uh, his head's just kind of turned funny. Uh, but her eyes are a little different size, um, a little too far apart. Her ears are kind of shaped funny. She's got a little pixelation right here too. Um, so that, you know, you can hit play again, go through and do it again and again and again until 
uh, you know, you've got uh, a really good skill set. You don't have to play it forever. Um, Google's odd one out um, is a, another good one. Uh, you're picking from four images and pick which one is AI generated uh, out of the group. Um, uh, and it's time, so it's a little harder. It's some great practice. Uh, but the one I really want you to try now <clears throat> and hit pause for this is Spot the Troll. This was uh, from the Clemson Media Lab. Uh, and when you hit start now, <clears throat> it'll give you, excuse me, uh, eight profiles. And you're supposed to read through them and kind of get a feel for whether or not you think it's a real account or a fake account, a troll account. And I voted for this one being a troll account, said I was correct. Um, you know, it says why, you know, what, what uh, you know, where it came from. It was a Russian troll, made troll account. Shows the signs and things like that, what to look for. Um, and then move on to the next one. Uh, and then you vote there and then on and on. Don't be surprised if you score three out of eight. Uh, they get pretty tough after the first two or three. Um, but taking advantage of that uh, and play with that tool a little bit uh, and uh, go through uh, all eight exercises. It takes just a minute or two to get through. Uh, but study them closely and try to, you know, try to get the answers right. Uh, you'll learn a lot from it just through the you know, explanation at the end of each one. Um, next one I'm going to show you is a Google Fact Check Explorer. Uh, so if you click on this one and open it up, this tool's been around since 2019, right before the pandemic. Uh, it allows you to search for fact checks. You can type in a keyword, you know, a, a, a person or, you know, a, a topic, you know, climate change, something like that. And it gives you um, the most current fact checks, uh, uh, not just of stories, um, but social media posts, blogs, <clears throat> things that were said about that person or that person said or what was written about them. And it gives you links to the fact check on them. Google's been running fact checks and matching them up to uh, uh, the fact checking organizations, I should say, up to uh, the stories that you'll find in Google search since 2017. That was a result of all the misinformation shared during the 2016 election. You know, Google did their best to correct that by matching up fact checks from PolitiFact, USA Today, places all over the world. Australia's AP, India Today is in here. I often open up this tool early in the morning to go through and see, you know, hey, is this, you know, something that I, you know, what, that, what did I miss overnight when I was sleeping? You know, what came through with, uh, all the international fact checks? It tells you, you know, if it's real or fake or an AI image, um, and you can click on uh, the, the link. Uh, and it goes in here and it talks about this image of Trump being, you know, uh, AI generated image of him being arrested and hold off. You know, it's it's fake and it was being widely shared and, you know, things like that. Um, you know, and these fact checks warn you, you know, not to use information out of that story. So if you're working on a social media desk at a newsroom or for a company or something, uh, you're unsure of something that maybe was tweeted at you or sent to you over you know, Facebook or email or whatever. Uh, you'll run a few keywords from the story through here just to make sure it ha doesn't have a fact check on. Um, because a lot of times you'll see altered or false, um, you know, uh, uh, posts. And it covers social media posts, too, not just news stories and things like that. Well, one of the things they added to it uh, just uh, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, in beta was this little search by image tool. And you can click on this and cut and paste a URL to an image in here or drag or upload an image in here. And it'll reverse image search it and fact check it and show you where it was first posted. So I'm going to find an image out here um, and we're going to drag it in here. This is one that we know is false. This is the Hurricane Sandy Street Shark. Okay, this photo originated back during Hurricane Sandy in New Jersey. Uh, you can see the shark and the, the really poor Photoshop around it. You can see the water flow behind the shark's fin. Now, really bad, bad Photoshop. So I'm going to drag it in here just to show you what one that's fake, what it looks like. Just drag it in there and run a little analysis on it. Uh, it doesn't show you much on the first tab, but when you click on image context, and you have these images too in your folder uh, up here, images for fact checking. You have video, photos, text, uh, or video, yeah, video, audio, photos, and text in here. Um, so if you want to play with these at home, you know, you feel free. Um, uh, and uh, click on image context. Um, and it'll take a couple seconds, but it'll show you where and when this image first originated. So if somebody sent me this image today and said, hey, this is from a hurricane down in Florida. I can see that this image first originated on 10-30-2012. 
um, on these really odd websites. I don't see the New York Times or you know, the Chicago Tribune here. I see stuff like hoax.net. You, know, you can open it up and see, oh my God, you know, this is terrible. It's part of a bunch of hoax images about uh, the weather and things like that. You know, there it is. Um, you have a bunch of other ones in there too. Um, so um, uh, that's a good way to do uh, a fact check on an image. Another way to do it is to go into images.google.com. And that's linked off your handout as well, images.google.com. This is what we call reverse image search. Um, and what I could do is drop in here uh, a bunch of uh, uh, an image and reverse image search it and see where it first came from. Um, it'll also give me a, a little more information, you know, uh, like links to uh, the stories and things like that. Very, you know, this is kind of the old school way of doing it. And there's a photo of a giant beach ball running wild through the streets of London. And I don't know if this is real or not. This looks very suspicious to me. Like it could be fake. Let's find out. So we can see where it's been published before. I can drag it in here. It uses the same technology in Google Lens, which is on your phone. Anytime you're covering a news event and somebody sends you an image like this, typically it's one of several images through the progression of the, the news story. So here we see, you know, a, a giant beach ball on a stand down here. Uh, another one where the similar you know, setup where it's rolling here. And then another one where it's dying a slow death in a pool of water. Oh, well, maybe it's real. I don't know. Click on find image source. And you go in here and you can find the Irish Mirror, the Mirror, the Independent, the Guardian, all these news outlets, you know, respectable news outlets in, in Great Britain. Um, boom, had these stories about a giant beach ball. It was on a display. Wind came, rain came, blew it off its support, rolled through the streets and died a slow death right down here. Uh, in this, it was a big giant puddle of water there. That's what you saw in the earlier photo. But it's got a little story in there about how it, how it happened. It's a real photo. It's a real image from a real news event. So that's how you do fact checks on photos very quickly. If Google doesn't get it done for you, tineyee.com -E um, runs a simple, similar algorithm, but a little bit different. You can upload an image or cut, paste a URL in. Uh, you can also look up Revi, R-E-V-E-Y-E. -E. Uh, it's a Google Chrome extension. Um, and you can install it on your uh, computer. It sits right up here. And then you can right click on an image and uh, choose from the pull down menu right here. Um, do I want to search all search engines or just one of the four? Baidu is not part of it anymore. It's just Google, Bing, Yandex, and Tenai. Um, and it'll search all four of those. It'll open up four tabs and do a very wide image search on a lot of different search engines. And if you really want to dig for results, that's a good way to do it. And it's a good time saver. Um, so you have to install that into your home computer. You can't do it among the uh, IMAX up at school. Okay. So that's the fact check. It explores and reverse image search. What about video? Okay. Videos are coming along that are very realistic and it's scary how realistic they are. Um, there's a tool uh, that's out and it'll be out of beta very shortly called Sora, S-O-R-A. It's made by the folks at OpenAI who brought you... Uh, um, who brought you a uh, uh, chat GPT. Um, and this allows you to write uh, text prompts that are no more than a short paragraph long. You can create videos like this. Notice as she walks, it picks up her uh, reflection in the uh, water on the ground, it picks up shadows. Very realistic. We can still kind of tell that it's fake, but it's getting a lot better. Here's some others. Here's the real scary one. The only way you can tell that this image is fake or video is fake, you see some pixelation over here in the in the rocks, and then you see some over here in the trees when it starts around the bend right there. That's the only way you can tell that this is fake. It looks very, very real. So fact-checking these videos, you know, what's real and what isn't, is, is very difficult, and it's becoming more and more difficult. You look for things like pixelation, shadows, things like that. So we're going to show you a tool that can help you with that. You can do this in YouTube as well. Um, it'll work in Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro, where you break a video down frame by frame. And if you know what you're looking for, it can be a really good way to kind of do some digital forensics quickly on a video. So this is the website, watch frame by frame. It's on your handout. So just click here. Um, down here's the video. And I'm going to play this video for you. And this is a uh, deep fake video. Actually, it's green screen video. A giant eagle, it's actually a hawk, Swooping down, 
God, this ran in a lot of news newsrooms on their websites. End of newscasts. Oh, shit. <laughs> Guy drops an S bomb. Yeah. Bird trying to fly off with the little kid. Oh, and we're all oh, the little guy's okay. This went viral. People loved this video because it was one of those kind of oddity stories it involved an animal and the little kids. People love that kind of stuff. And it went viral. People believed it. Well, later in that day and into the next morning, uh, there began to be a lot of chatter on social media among uh, uh, special effects people in Hollywood. They had a good laugh over all this um, because they knew what to look for. They go, oh, man, some film students uh, fooled you guys with some green screen. Uh, and they knew what to look for. So they did that by watching frame by frame. So I'm going to hit watch video. Just plug the link in. That's all you have to do. You have this all on your hand now. And I'm going to freeze it right around the spot where the bird swoops down on the ground. Freeze it. All right. Late afternoon sun. Cast shadows going this direction. Notice the people, the dude walking here. His shadow goes this way. The bird's shadow is kind of out in front of it a little bit. It's really small and it's black, which is a little odd. You know, it should be kind of a lighter gray like the tree branches here. But let me click through frame by frame. You could do that by clicking on the little button below it. So you might want to practice with this afterwards and just get a feel for it. Now the bird's shadow is right underneath it. It's, again, very black, but it's right underneath it. This person's shadow is pointing the different direction. Here it should be going this way like the other you know, like this guy's shadow. It should be pointing out to the left, not out to the right. As we get closer, we see a little kid's shadow. He's going out this way. The mom's shadow's going this way. Nope, it should be going out to the left, out to the left. The bird's shadow's a little bit behind it, and it's very, very dark. You can barely see it. It's kind of covered up by the bird. And you can see it, too, when the bird picks up the little guy and flies off with him. The little guy's kind of bent here. You know, he's almost L-shaped. Uh, you know, and, and look at the uh, shadow. It doesn't match up at all. The bird's shadow is very small. You know, it just isn't accurate at all. And you can see it, too, when he drops him. We'll hear the kids flying at an angle and shadows up and down. Shadows are very hard to do in green screen. It's something that Hollywood kind of tricks us with and fools us with sometimes. Uh, you know, and here there's basically no shadow at all. So that's what the, the uh, special effects people know to look for. You know, pretty cool thing. So that's how you fact check video. Um, another tool uh, that is really helpful uh, is uh, going in and looking at crowd sizes. Mapchecking.com. Go ahead and open up this one. If you need to measure the size of a protest or a rally or something, and you know, we have a lot of those you know, surrounding the election and stuff, um, yeah, you can do that. Um, I'm going to type in U.S. Capitol because I was doing one of these trainings uh, uh, the, the day of the insurrection on June 6th of 20, or January 6th of 2021. Um, and uh, we were doing this in real time, which is really bizarre. I was training a bunch of journalists at Gannett USA Today. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is the steps of the U.S. Capitol where, you know, the crowd kind of formed, was pushing in. It's scaffolding up here for the inauguration. But the main crowd kind of, and I'm going to click around on here and paint a little area where that kind of main crowd was, this little area here. And I can make it bigger or smaller just by stretching the little corners out. Um, and I can set over here how dense that space is. And I'm gonna set it to two people per square meter. That means there were about 8,600 people out here. There, I mean, there were others off wandering around kind of about the uh, hinterlands here, but the main group that was pushing in you had about seven, 8,000 people out there, you know, a, a pretty big group. Uh, not all of them got in the building. You can't measure what's inside the building, but you can do it uh, just by sketching it out here. Um, you know, this is good for, you know, protests here in Chicago, you know, down by the Dirksen building or down by this, what well, used to be the state office building that plaza down there where the Picasso is. Um, and remember that this multiplier up here, two people per square meter is very important. As it goes up, you know, you get a higher, more dense crowd. But what does two people per square meter look like and how's it different from one person per square meter, or, you know, three people per square meter? There's actually a little link up here that explains it. Crowd density, what does it look like? So you click on that. Dr. Keith Still, who studies crowd safety and risk analysis, gives us these little graphics of what it looks like. Half a person per square meter, 
two people per square meter was was right here. This is about what it looked like at the insurrection. George Floyd protests here in Chicago. That's about our crowd size. You go down here, it goes all the way up to six people per square meter. This would be like a lot of Palooza crowd. So, you know, really cool, you know, how they show the science behind this. This is what we call a mashup. This is a tool that was built by Anthony Cattell, a web developer. <clears throat> and he used Google Maps API application programming interface uh, to build this out. Um, really, really cool fact-checking tool because a lot of times, you know, crowd sizes are, are exaggerated. Trump exaggerated the size of his uh, inauguration crowd back in 2017. He said there were a million people there. No way I painted the area. There's no way that physically impossible that more than a quarter of a million people could fit in that area he said was packed. And it wasn't because we saw the pictures. <clears throat> so something interesting to note. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um Reset the area, you get reset up there, and you can redraw your, your space. So again, really good for fact-checking uh, uh, crowd sizes or estimating crowd sizes. And you can link off to that, too. Once you draw that on there, you can actually link off to it uh, out of your story um, to show people how you uh, fact-checked it. Uh, GPT-0 and copy leaks. Um, I demoed GPT-0 at the start of the semester. Kind of showed you, you know, how I, I catch people who are using AI to write their stories. Um, it also works for press releases. This is an AI-generated press release about, and it's the most disgusting thing ever, bacon baby, a bacon-infused baby formula. Ugh. Um, and I added at the bottom, I did a little bit of writing down here. I added this fake uh, contact information at the bottom. So <clears throat> I copied all this and I'll drop it into GPT-0. You can also drop it into Copy Leaks. Um, Copy Leaks gives you uh, several free, <laughs> excuse me, several free uh, 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 tests. Uh, as a GPT-0 before it starts to charge you. Um, but GPT-0 says this is, you know, it's half sure that it's more than half sure that it's AI generated. It's actually all. Um, down here, it gives you a little bit more mixed, 35%. Human, 14%, which is the part I wrote down at the bottom uh, with my contact info. So if you see a number like this, you know pretty much that, that a good chunk of it, if not all of it, uh, was created using... <clears throat> using AI. Um, so uh, Copy Leaks uh, runs an even deeper scan. I've got the paid version of this tool. Um, and I can do you know plagiarism detection, AI detection. Uh, and here, just place the text in. Uh, very reliable, this one. And I never check it in just one tool. I run it through through more than one. Um, just to give, give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to bust anybody for this. But you know, if I have to, I will. Um, but it's really helpful in newsrooms. You know, the, the newsrooms I do trainings with really love the fact that they're always suspicious of AI generated uh, um, uh, AI generated press releases uh, because they tend to be fake news. Um, and uh, this is a good way to vet them quickly without having to put a lot of time into it. Audio and video. How do we fact check audio and video? There's a great tool for that called Deep Fake Meter, and it's linked off of your uh, uh, handout. Um, so go ahead and, if you want to, open it up. Uh, and I've got two files in your uh, folder, your images and files for fact-checking. Uh, one is called Cronkite Moon Video, uh, and the other one is Biden uh, Robocall. And I'm going to play them both here. Biden's Robocall. This is a, a real Robocall yeah, that we're... participated in our primary. What a bunch of malarkey. This went out during the New Hampshire primary. And it went out to thousands of voters in New Hampshire. It is a fake robocall that was created by one of Biden's political adversaries in the Democratic Party. And what Biden is telling people in this, it sounds like him. You know, it's a little robotic toward the end, but you know most robocalls do sound that way. Um, and people believe this, and some of them didn't go to the polls because they believe that Biden told them not to vote in the in the New Hampshire primary. It's crazy. But I'll go ahead and play this for you. We know the value of voting Democratic when our votes count. It's important that you save your vote for the November election. We'll need your help in electing Democrats up and down the ticket. Voting this Tuesday only enables the Republicans in their quest to elect Donald Trump again. Your vote makes a difference in November, not this Tuesday. If you would like to be removed from future calls, please press 2 now. 
you know, people believe this. Um, you know, why can't you vote in a primary and in the general election? You know, I mean, it makes no sense. Uh, but, you know, it sounded real. They had actually paid uh, a person down in uh, uh, New Orleans, uh, uh, I think $100 or $200 uh, to create this fake robocall. Uh, and again, they sent it out to thousands of people. Well, how can you check, you know, if you run across something like this, you know, maybe somebody sent you some audio or something. Um, you can run it through a tool called Deep Fake O Meter. And this is a big database of uh, fact checking tools um, that uh, have been created at various universities. And <clears throat> you can upload by clicking here. And I'll go find the Biden audio and upload it. And it gives you, depending on the tool, it does video as well. Um, uh, either five or six tools that you can go through and use. Um, so I'm going to run it through the uh, uh, Bu University of Buffalo's aud audio detector, which is also the organization that has built this tool. Um, and I'll hit there and then hit submit. And it takes about 35 seconds for it to process audio, sometimes a little longer. Um, so, you know, you just kind of sit there and let it percolate. Um, I'll show you a phone validator um, uh, while that's cooking. Um, phone validator, as I mentioned earlier, you can type a phone number in there. Try yours in there. See if it tells you if it's a robocall number or not. Um, but it'll go through and val validate uh, uh, numbers for you. Um, and I use this quite a bit. I get a lot of uh, spam calls because I register a lot of URLs and I make my data public. Uh, people sell that data off. Register.com, GoDaddy, and places like that sell my uh, data off. So I get a lot of you know, offers and stuff like that. Anytime I, I register a new URL, and I like to make the information public in case anybody wants to buy it ever. Um, and they do sometimes, um, but uh, you know, I, I run the numbers through there and make sure I know they're they're not valid numbers. Same thing, you know, reporters use this if they want to see if it's a fake number or not. Um, it's calling them and trying to give them information. Um, you know, it's a good way to test it. Uh, this is still percolating, but it's almost done here, uh, and it'll give me a percentage of of how much it thinks. Uh, uh, and really, if there, you see any percentage on here, you see eight percent or nine percent. Um, that that's a big red flag. Um, so you know, make sure that you're not uh, uh, you know uh, using anything that you see any percentage AI in, especially if you're publishing it. Um, again, this is my scan and copy leaks of that press release. Hundred percent sure certainty on this one that it was AI content. The other one was only fifty one percent sure, but you know, you see any high percentage like that, you know. It's that's a big red flag for you. Um, anyway, deep picometer is kind of percolating along here. It'll kick in eventually. But what it'll tell you when it finishes uh, is that uh, um, it uh, uh, has found that um, it's high percentage uh, of AI uh, work in it. Um, so, you know, something to, to consider using. I'm going to show you a video. Um, and uh, this is a video that I created. It's a deep fake. Um, I don't publish it online. I only use it for the, the this uh, testing that I do with my trainings. And this was made with a photo and a uh, text script. This is Walter Cronkite, also known as the most trusted man in America. And he used this my good Walter impersonation. Um, this was his sign off from the moon landing. I was four years old when uh, they put a man on the moon. Uh, and Walter had this very poetic sign off. I can still remember it to this day. It was such a big deal. Uh, everybody was watching. It was one of the most watched things ever on TV. And Walter had this very poetic sign up. He had written these words and then read them. Now, keep in mind, this is a picture talking to you. Okay. There are phone apps that will do this too, you know. But uh, I use Runway ML, a tool that we're, you're going to learn coming up here in, in the next week or two when we get into video. Um, watch his lips and listen, watch the words. Virtually impossible to tell that this is a deep fake. His voice is a little softer than Walter's is in real life. I'm working on some uh, audio mimicking software, voice mimicking software that'll match it perfectly. Uh, but a lot of people struggle with this, but I'll go ahead and play it. The date's indelible. It's going to be remembered as long as man survives. July 20th, 1969. The day a man reached and walked on the moon. The least of us is improved by the things done by the best of us. Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins are the best of us. And I made that in about 10 minutes, pulling the image, finding the script, and cutting it, pasting it into runway ML. Uh, even with, you know, keep in mind, it drops its watermark down here too, so you think it'd be an easy detection. It fools a lot of deep fake detection tools. Deepware, which is one of them linked off your, your handout, fools it. 
it, it can't pick up on. Um, so I'm going to run that through here too. We'll see if we can actually get some results out of the Bacon meter today. Maybe my uh, uh, Wi-Fi is a little slow today or something, but uh, I don't think so. This one I'm going to use the University of Tokyo uh, and then hit submit. And we'll see if it picks up. Uh, it usually takes about 50 seconds for the uh, uh, for that one. And this one's still stuck. I'm going to do the audio one again because it seemed to get sticky. And if, you know, if any of these tools ever lock up on you like it did me there, just run them through again. You know, it happens. Sometimes I can pick another tool. Um, but I'll give Buffalo another run. They might be having a little trouble today or something. Usually it flashes how many seconds it's going to take, which kind of tells me they're having some issues, but uh, uh, it'll often work pretty quickly for you. The video's working through the University of Tokyo pretty quick. So I usually run it through more than one. I mean, it gives you five or six different choices of tools. So, you know, you want to think about that as you're, as you're testing these. Um, and these are, you know, how reporters detect and see if, uh, or editors, uh, video editors uh, detect and see if, you know, something was built using AI, video or audio. Um, these are deep fakes. Um, you know, people are trying to mislead you uh, by, uh, uh, you know, uh, by dropping in that uh, uh, that information. So, those are some really cool deep fake tools. Um, uh, Rolly App is another good tool. Um, R O L L I A P P dot com. You can set up a free account. There it usually takes a couple of days to get approved. That's why I asked you to do it before, you know, a couple of days before class rather than today, you know, waiting. Um, Nick, uh, Nick Toso, uh, who built this, uh, Nick is a uh, former journalist at uh, 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 CNN. He was a producer there. Um, he built this tool originally as a uh, database of expert sources. Um, but uh thing he added in after that is a tool called uh, Information Tracer. He partnered with a guy by the name of Zuhan Chen. What Chen has done is built this information tracer tool. An information tracer allows you to track uh, a certain topic. In this case, I typed in Donald Trump. Here's my expert sources up here. Um, and down below, it analyzes social media on Donald Trump, either stuff he's posted or other people have posted about him. Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, YouTube, and Insta. I can filter them out and just do Twitter, or just Reddit, or just Insta. I can hover over them and see all the posts, uh, and they'll tell me, you know, okay, well, who, what account posted what, and how viral did it go? It goes back, you know, uh, just you know, uh, a day or so. Um, you know, uh, if I'm in Mar uh, back in May, uh, it would be uh, an entire uh, week, but here it can't cross over uh, months. So I'm doing this on June first. It's showing just you know from June first. These are the most viral posts, gives you the post and the account. No surprise, Donald Trump Jr., you know, uh, all these others. Um, some of these are bot accounts. Some of them are from media. Some of them are from various organizations, uh, political organizations, things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, interesting, you know, uh, but where it gets really interesting is when you click on view more social trends, it gives you a filter over here. So I can add filters to it. I can do Donald Trump and Biden, but not Hunter Biden. I don't want anything with Hunter Biden in it. And instead of going back just to May 26th, I'll take it back to April 1st. So it's going to give me, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, two months of uh, posts. It'll take a while for this to build. And while it's building, it just gives you some, you know, the more popular tweets that have uh, come out on these topics, username, profile, you know, uh, go and visit it and read it on Twitter if you want to. Um, and then once this fully loads, you can do uh, some prompt analysis on it. It has these pre-written prompts on here. Um, so it's doing some funky stuff today. Yeah, it's got, got all these Twitter posts going vertical on May 29th. Wonder why? Uh, you know, that was uh, the, the day of the uh, verdict um, uh, on his uh, uh, 34 counts. He was found guilty on all of them. So things just went crazy. There were tons of those. So we can see how is it spreading globally? Who are the top spreaders? Are there suspicious patterns? 
this kind of gives you an overall temperature here. And I'm a little surprised it says low here. Um, you know, that just kind of says, oh, you know, looking over Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, there doesn't seem to be, you know, the, a lot of the news organizations, you know, coverage kind of drowned out a lot of the bots. But you can get more detail and go in here and go, who are the top spreaders? Okay. And in that, it'll show you the profile, the type, the country. It'll pop up here in a little bit. Usually it's a flag. So if you show you if it's a U.S. Uh, account, they're there popping in. U.S. account, individual, it has four categories. Individual, media, uh, is it an organization or is it a bot? You know, so there's Donald Trump Jr.'s Twitter. Um, as we click through here, try to find a couple that'll say bots. Here's a bot one, the Trump train. Um, this is a bot account. So it actually identifies the country and what type of account it is. Um, a lot of newsrooms run little uh, uh, lists, a little spreadsheet of uh, listing all the uh, uh, accounts that are uh, bots so they don't share anything or use anything from those. You can track where it's spreading globally too by country. You can see the map here. Is it an individual organization or bot? You can zoom in on them. This uses Google Maps API too. You see the little Google logo there. You know, how's it spreading across platforms? You know, and you, you can filter them out too. Um, and go into just Twitter here. Um, and here we see, you know, uh, all of our uh, accounts here. I filtered it out. It's a little more effective. That type of account and the flag, what country it comes from, very helpful. You know, the, the Liam Neeson, you know, it's not really his uh, account. It's actually spelled Nissan, um, uh, and uh, you know, good way to filter out those fake accounts. Let's go see how Deep Fake Meter did. Uh, and again, we've got uh, uh, right here on your election fact check export an exercise with Wooly app that walks you through all the stuff I just showed you. Uh, so Deep Fake Meter again is still processing. It's it's just a little hung up today, but typically it'll kick in about thirty seconds to a minute and give you some results. Sorry, it didn't do it today. I'll probably do it for you. So go ahead and run them through there. Uh, and see what you get. Uh, maybe try some different uh, outlets. But yeah, it's still kicking through. It'll eventually pop up, and it's kind of freezing up on me there. Um, bummer, because um, it's always kind of cool to see the results, because uh, it does a really good job of flagging fake uh, audio and fake video. Um, so um, that's our uh, little training. There's no exercise off this. But three things I need you to do um, uh, heading into next week, and we are going to meet in person next week. The NSEO 1200 uh, uh, Dreher class at 9.30 um, is work on your midterm paper. It's due Monday, October 14th, not far off. You know, it's only uh, about 11 days away. Uh, it's due Monday, October 14th, 9 a.m. You'll email it to me if either as a Word or a Google Doc. Um, make sure you set up free accounts on Runway, ML, Lensgo, uh, Adobe Firefly. I think your UIC uh, uh, credentials work on uh, logging into Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, if it doesn't, um, just let me know. I think you can use Firefly for free now without that. So, um, and if you have a, your MidJourney account set up, just make sure it's connected to your Discord account uh, as well. Because um, we have those, we had all this uh, MidJourney stuff set up in week one. Because we're going to start using it now. We're going to do images and, and uh, video work uh, as well. So I wanted to show you the fact checking first before we actually really got into um, building uh, that ourselves. There's also a little uh, um, uh, read on from Wired Magazine, the dark side of open source AI image generators. Those tools we're playing with next week, uh, you know, there, there's some good and bad things about them. Uh, and this article goes into that um, and, uh, uh, you know, how some of these uh, you know, image databases are, are built with stolen photos and images and things like that. Um, so it's, uh, you know, I, I never paint uh, the picture too brightly for you in this class. I show you the dark side of some of the AI stuff, too, that you know, people are still trying to sort out. So um, go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, make sure you get all three of these things done. Uh, and we'll see you in class uh, when I get back from D.C. Uh, next Tuesday at 930. Thanks a lot. We'll see you.